I'm here at the Ohio National Poultry Show. It's a big deal if you love chickens. Just look at all of these trophies that would be given away to folks who are, well, enthusiasts about chickens. This show's been going on since 1956, and it's a place for people who are serious about breeding to bring their best quality stock and see what they win. It's considered the Westminster of chicken shows. And today's episode, we're going to introduce you to some of these unique breeds and discuss how you can get started raising your own. So gather your friends and family and let's have some fun and look at some of these extraordinary birds. Well, I better put this back before they see it's missing. The Ohio National Poultry Show is a show for exhibition poultry. They come from all over the United States to, to show their chickens and see if they can win or not. I've been raising chickens since I was eight and I'm 52 now, so I've been doing this a long time and uh, it's still fun, so I, I love doing it. I've been showing, at least in poultry, for almost 18 years. It's really something that my mom and I started together. Um, I like getting together with all your friends from all over the country. It's really cool to come to a big show like this and see everybody. Um, it's fun to compete with your friends. So this is the Wyandotte Breeders Rhode Island Red Club. Um, and these are all just badges that I want. This is serious business to the chicken people. And we're here to win. That, 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 I mean, yeah, we're, we're pretty dang competitive. Well, for some people it's a, just kind of like a backyard fun type of thing, but other people take it a lot more serious than that, you know? Okay, we've got what they call a standard of perfection. The APA and the ABA both have their standards. And a judge starts out by looking for the type. Then he looks for cleanliness, how the breast is, the wings, if the feathers are all in or not, comb, eye color, leg color. They do wash their chickens and they prep them, they hair dry them, they do groom them it's just like you've got to groom a dog. They do that with chickens. Getting um, the, the, any kind of debris off the feet so the feet are clean when the judge picks them up. There's 400 different varieties and breeds here. There's ducks, there's geese, there's turkeys. We've got uh, cochins, big cochins, the barred rocks, the Rhode Island reds, white rocks. We've got Polish. We've got silkies. We've got all different kind of chickens that they don't normally see. We've got 200 kids participating this year in the kids show, junior show we call it. And they're just as competitive as the adults. I think showing is fun. It just kind of gives you kind of a rush when you see that you won something or even if you didn't, just knowing that someone else look at your birds to see how they were and possibly give you feedback as positive experience. And it brings out the, their personalities. They learn to talk to adults. It'll give you experience to take care of other things that aren't just you and responsibility of making sure they have food, they have water, keeping them everything clean with them. So it's just a great experience overall. The atmosphere is fantastic. The people are great. They're super friendly. You can just stand around and talk to people all day. I have so many friends here. I've been doing this so long that I look forward every year to seeing them. And like this show in Ohio is so big. Everyone comes here. I just talked to two friends from California that I only see once a year or once every other year. It was, it was great. You'll never see anything like this anywhere else in the United States. I started when I could join 4-H, so like third grade. Sebastopols are can get dirty really easily, like some of these stained feathers. So we dump their pools twice a day, try to keep them on as much grass as possible, rotate the grass so that they don't get muddy. Um, they're definitely a labor of love and a, tip, a hard breed to keep clean, but 
We try our best. I love their curly feathers. They're really docile and tame. They all have personalities. I love watching them grow from goslings up to adults. They're a really fun breed. When you get into poultry, you realize there's so many different breeds, but did you know that many of them are actually threatened by extinction? Over 60 breeds of chickens, dozens of different breeds of ducks, geese, and turkeys. Well, they're all threatened. Take this giant Dewlap Toulouse Goose. What a name, don't you think? A great old French breed, but so few people raise them anymore. It's just an example of birds that are threatened. The American Livestock Conservancy is dedicated to raising the awareness of not only these breeds of poultry that are threatened, but other livestock as well. Jeanette Barringer, the senior program manager of the Livestock Conservancy, is reaching out to farmers, hobbyists, hatcheries, and anyone else who's breeding the various forms of poultry. Jeanette, this is one of my favorite breeds. This is, of course, a, a light Sussex. Mm -hmm. Isn't she a great girl? Oh yeah, she's got a lot of substance to her, and this is the kind of kind of work we like to see getting done with the chickens that they're, you know, to breed standard. And she's heavy. This is going to make a mighty fine table bird. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's, they're great, and it's an English breed, uh, white skin, white fat, um, mm -hmm. great, great table bird. The Livestock Conservancy has been um, in existence for now over 40 years. Yeah, next year will be 40 years. 40, will it be? Yeah. Okay, coming yeah. up, that's wonderful. You guys do such great work, I think, raising awareness about some of these endangered breeds. Mm -hmm. Not only poultry, but a lot of mammalian species of livestock. Oh, sure, all, all, the, all the common livestock uh, and poultry species that are kept on American farms we work with. And the what's important about the breeds we work with is, should they go away, the the foundation that was used to create that breed no longer exists. Yeah. And that's actually quite important for everybody, whether you're raising birds or not. Most of agriculture is commercial you know, at this point, and they use very few breeds. Yes. And when you breed the best of the best of the best, year after year after year, guess what? They're related to each yeah. other. With a very narrow genome. Yes. And you know, when the genetic problems creep in, you know, who are you going to call? Yes. Yeah, it's it's right. these guys. You got to come back to the originals. Absolutely. And it's kind of like managing a stock portfolio. You don't put your stock all into just one item. One thing, a right. A diversified portfolio is always the way to go, and that's how we explain the importance of this. What are some of the other things that the Livestock Conservancy is doing, maybe in the way of uh, just keeping up with numbers? Uh, well, we do censusing, uh, both of poultry and livestock, mm -hmm. and that's a pretty hefty project. I because, can imagine. Especially with poultry, because, you know, they don't register chickens or, or geese. <laughs> right. um, so it's uh, through our networks that we're able to reach out to people and we don't just count hatchery birds we, we try to reach out to private individuals farms the breed like clubs one. farms like this yeah. um, universities there's some universities with very important flocks out there so when you learn that a certain breed is critically endangered mm -hmm. then awareness can be raised and people can rally to the support of that particular breed yeah so part part of the power of our network abilities is that when we find a breed that really needs help yeah. we can get people excited about it sure. and try and identify people that would be good partners and good stewards and build from there and um, you know it takes time it and does. everybody wants to save things right away but <laughs> as we time. talked about you know production selection and making sure you're breeding the right birds yes. it can take years to it recover can. a breed yeah <laughs> well thank you for being here at the farm and oh, taking a look Pleasure. at our, our collection of chickens. Uh, I can talk chickens all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a good girl. Yes, you're doing very well on camera. <laughs> My name is David Harris, and I show Rosecomb Nankins. This one's Rodney, and this one is Rosie. They're the same breed, but different gender. This is a male or cock, and this is a female or pullet. The male is the male will crow and the male will typically grow bigger spurs. The female will sometimes grow spurs, but the female lays eggs and usually you want to have more females than males so that the females don't get all their feathers ripped up by the males all trying to produce offspring. 
We try to keep the separate breeds separated because we have different cocks or roosters for different breeds. So we don't want all of them fighting, so we have different pens for each breed. Well, Rodney is very open. Like, if I'll come outside, he'll follow me. If I turn around, he'll just kind of stop. But he likes to follow you because, you know, I give him birds sometimes. And Rosie more of likes to follow Rodney. So wherever Rodney goes, Rosie will follow and just kind of follow the leader in a sense. I like how rare they are and how you don't really see many of them at shows. It just makes it a lot better seeing that you have something that not many people do. For over 4,000 years, chickens have been providing us with, well, meat, eggs, a lot of entertainment, and I have to say, beauty. Chickens comprise over 20% of the animal protein we eat. You didn't want to hear that, did you? With some concerns over how industrial poultry is produced, the popularity of raising a backyard flock is on the rise. And let me tell you, the taste and texture of a freshly laid egg is something everyone should experience. Outside of the commonly asked question, what breed should I get, like these New Hampshire Reds, which by the way, lay a beautiful dark brown egg, the other question is, where can I actually find the birds? My good friend and poultry enthusiast, Ryan Carey, stopped by the farm recently, and we discussed the best and most practical ways for enthusiasts to get started. So what do you think of that one, Ryan? It's a pretty nice bird. Yep, well, these Spanish are, you know, they're really hard to find. We always have a lot of interest in them because of this amazing white face that they have. There's a lot of curiosity about that bird. Yes. Of course, it's a really old one. It's a foundational breed. It is, it's foundation of all Mediterranean breeds. It uh, dates back to the Roman times. They yeah, about they the actually, clown chicken. they wrote about, yeah, the clown chickens, yes. that white face, yeah. Yep. So let's say someone's interested in finding high quality heritage birds. You know, you've got hatcheries, of course, you can order from. There's uh, breeders, um, they're, they're in, in, hobbyists that, that just have them. Uh, what do you recommend for someone who really wants some top grade birds? Avoid the hatcheries. Um, yeah. Hatcheries are more concerned about production, mm -hmm. um, mainly egg production because they're selling hatch, hatching eggs. Right. Um, I would recommend you, uh, you find uh, a good reputable breeder um, or uh, check with the American Poultry Association. They have lists of breeders. Um, if you join the APA, you'll get a yearbook every year talking about uh, um, master exhibitors and ads from, from breeders across the country. Sure. You know, I've also found that some of the breed clubs can be really helpful. They can. I, I don't, I think the Spanish are in enough trouble that there isn't a Spanish breed club anymore, but there is a Mediterranean breed club that you yeah. can join that, that encompasses the Menorcas and the Spanish and the Andalusians and Leghorns. And, and social media, actually. Facebook has been a really good tool. Mm -hmm. A lot of breeders are on Facebook. They'll post pictures of their birds. They'll, they'll uh, ask questions. They'll, they'll tell people what they have available. Yes. Now, I know you're taking a rooster home uh, yes. for your for your Spanish, what, what is it that you like so much about Spanish? Well, they're a foundation breed, and and I have focused a lot on on Mediterranean breed. And and what I like about him is, and the trouble that I'm having is getting a good white face mm. that extends below the wattles, and it that it ex is all the way around the eye. Right, the long bib drops below the wattle. Yes, yes, and. <laughs> I, I, this is a white egg layer, and white egg layers are in real trouble in this country because pe too many people associate white eggs with store eggs, right. and and everyone thinks that a farm egg is brown eggs, and we need more people to to research where they're buying their eggs and, and care less about shell color and more about how the birds are raised and how, how yeah. well they're taken care of. Well, that's a very good point for people to, to not get so hung up about egg color and focus on the needs of these breeds. That's right. Yeah, very good. Looking forward to your new home, buddy. Why don't we get him packed up? Okay. All right. Thanks, Alan.
white crested ducks. They are a very hardy breed. You can use them for egg laying, they're good for meat, as well as they are great for just keeping out on the pond because they look kind of cool with their little crests. A cool thing about the breed is the fact that your large crested ducks produce the worst babies. Uh, because the crest is a recessive gene, you'll really only hatch 25% of whatever eggs you set. Uh, the less crested ducks are actually what we use for breeding because they produce the large crested birds at a better hatch rate than if we're breeding large crested birds together. The females are about six pounds, the males are about seven. And they're really friendly. Ours come up the lead out of your hand. Uh, we keep ours on a pond to keep them clean and white. And they also come in a black variety. Some features judges look for when they're going to judge a bird, they want a perfectly round crest that sits high on the head. Uh, preferably, they want it to be symmetrical with the eye. They want a bill that's fairly long and orange, and they want, at least in the white birds, to be solid white. The black variety, they want it to be solid black. And they want a body type that's medium built, uh, fairly strong bodied, and they want them to be horizontally shown. So they want the bird to be able to stand and uh, pose properly when they look at it. They're a fascinating breed because it is, it's very hard to breed them. And they have such character to them that once you get started, it's very hard to not want to love these birds. Carla, I think they're loving that green grass. Oh, they sure are after being in the car for nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, they made the journey up here beautifully. These are gorgeous girls. Well, thank you, thank you. You know, the silver spangled Appenzeller Spitzhaben, which is a real mouthful to say. <laughs> Most people say Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've become more and more popular, haven't they? They have. Yeah, and what do you attribute that popularity to? Is it just sort of the backyard chicken craze or? Their beauty, they're yeah. majestic, and I think more people, as more people see them, they want them. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to me the first time I saw them. <laughs> I fell in you love. You caught the bug. I did. I really well, did. Well, I, I do know that when people visit our farm and they see ours, they love them because they are so striking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the name Spitzhaben comes from this little crest, doesn't it? Exactly. Um, they come from the Appenzeller region of Switzerland, yeah. and the Spitzhaben is a ceremonial hat that the Swiss women wear, ah. and uh, this kind of reflects it with it goes up and then over their, their nose like that, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. what you're looking for. One thing that's unique about them are their ear, blue earlobes. Yes, yes. That Very stylish. Yeah. I think this one this actually one has, has more. Yeah, they're bluer, yeah, mm -hmm. indeed. And another thing they're known for is their nostrils. They're very cavernous and, and prominent. Hmm, how interesting. All these breeds have such marvelous characteristics. So aside from beauty, let's talk a little bit about this bird as a bird of utility because yours lay lots of eggs. They do. Um, right now they're laying more than my other breeds hmm. and they seem to lay most of the year. Yeah, um, right. Don't mind the cold weather. Don't mind the cold weather. I, I guess they're Swiss <laughs> origins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They've gotten used to it. And even though they're a Swiss bird um, and used to the, uh, the colder regions, hmm. they're a a little bit lighter bird. They don't have the heavy feathers and everything, so they adapt well to the heat. Right, right. And of course, they're wearing their little hat, so that, yes. that gives them a little shade in the summer and keeps them warm in the winter. I didn't think about that, but you're <laughs> absolutely right. Now, Carla, in this movement to conserve heritage birds, uh, the Appenzeller Spitzhaben is really a bird now that has moved past the critical or threatened list and, and now is in pretty good shape. Exactly, they are. Um, there's a few more varieties now than there were, mm -hmm. and I think that's also helped. Would this be a breed you'd recommend to someone for a backyard flock? Oh yeah, Def yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, just like any other birds, uh, they can be tamed. 
if you don't handle them, you know, at an early age, then they're going to be a little bit more skittish. Sure, right. The but, more accustomed they are to you, the calmer they'll be. Exactly. Yeah. And one thing that I found um, as I was breeding the birds was that the ro roosters were very non-aggressive. Hmm. I never had an, uh, an aggressive rooster. The only time they would even make any type of a fuss is if you picked up one of the hens and right. she fussed a little bit, then the rooster would come up and run up to me and then you put her down. It's like, well, cool, well, and walk away. Can't blame a guy for trying to defend his own. <laughs> I, I know, I know. And I, I was never afraid to turn my back on him. Well, Carla, thank you for the great work you're doing on this breed. It's really important work and it's a pleasure to have you here at the farm. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm enjoying being here. Wonderful. My name is Brian Knox. Um, I'm an ABA APA licensed judge and I raise uh, silver lace Wyandotte Bantams and light Brahma Bantams. This is a young silver lace Wyandotte cockerel. When we judge birds, we look for the overall shape confrontation, like the, we call it type. And uh, the, the male should have a, have a 40 degree tail back line and, and you want the legs centered and you want a wide head, the comb should be wide in the front and it tapers back and it follows the skull. Um, these birds have laced, a laced neck, which is a black feather with white lacing around the outside. And you don't want in any black ticking in the white lacing or any white in the middle. Uh, it's also got a, a saddle feather, which has white center with black lacing around and another row of white lacing around the black. And we also look for sharpness of color. The wings are supposed to be solid black with an edging of white. This is a very good feather on the end here. These ones in the middle are not so good. They have too much white in the middle. So that's a little bit of a cut that we give. The, the secondary feather is supposed to be about half black and white. And when the wing folds, you don't see the black. It covers by the white. They have two rows of lacing here, and he should have a solid white patch in his wing, but here he has a little black ticking in the, in the patch. So that's a small color defect. And he should have a, a black tail green with green sheen. You, uh, purple is a defect. We want to see as much green as we can see in the bird, in, in black birds. There's more points for shape than color, so we look for the overall shape of the bird, how they stand, how they walk around the cage, and that's all how we look at things. But we do, when we get in big classes, we do look at those little details to separate the winner from the loser. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed visiting this poultry show as much as I have. Hey, if you want to help support some of these breeds, there's several ways you can do it. One is to join an organization like the Livestock Conservancy or support a local farmer. That's a big help. And the other, well, you just might be a little adventurous and jump in and start raising a breed in need yourself. Well, until next time, I'm Alan Smith.